Okay. So, we saw one kind of Z PID tuning method which was ZN method. Now, we will look into certain other methods and uh, those methods are also very popular. One of them is Shane Horn, Horns and Reswick CHR method. Now, we also know that ZN method was used for getting the, the uh, quickest response in terms of the uh, amplitude decays, the amplitude decay was the criteria, quarter amp amplitude decay was the criteria and let us see what are, what is the criteria followed in CHR method now. CHR method for the uh, closed loop systems will, will give a better robustness as against the ZN method. For this particular um, CHR method is designed for quickest response without overshoot, okay. Now, and there are two tuning rules given. One is the quickest response without overshoot and the other is quickest response with 20 percent overshoot. The way ZN had done, ZN had said, okay, let me give you one rule which is based on step response or the frequency response and they will always be making sure that you are getting the overshoot and that particular overshoot will die with the quarter amplitude decay. Whereas CHR said that, okay, I, let me give you the tuning rule based on no overshoot and 20 percent overshoot. At the same time, there are two different control objectives considered. One is tuning rule if you are considering the load disturbance, uh, load disturbance rejection as the criteria, then there is another one set of tuning rules and the uh, if you are considering um, um, set point response as the control criteria, then there is a separate tuning rule. Now, if you look at if we compare between this no overshoot and 20 percent overshoot with respect to the um, tuning rules for set point response method, see that the proportional control tuning rule is same. So, for example, for no overshoot you got the proportional control, controller gain, proportional gain as 0.3. Similarly, for even for the load disturbance you got the, uh, the proportional gain as 0.3 and same for 20 percent, fair enough. But as soon as you introduce in integral control, you can have better idea about what the load disturbance and set point response could be. So, there comes the difference between what, uh, I mean you, you have to refer to this particular table, what do you want? You want load disturbance with no overshoot or you want set point response with 20 percent overshoot. Refer to this table and based on that the tuning will change. This also gives a fairly good idea that okay, proportional control you, you have limitations, you will not be able to do uh, uh, a very good load disturbance rejection or a very good step point response, you will have a fairly okay uh, idea about it and no with, with or without overshoot you have the same kind of response that you will get. But if you want to go ahead with PI or PID control, then you have, you have to decide the control objective criteria. Con what is, what is the priority for you, whether the load disturbance is a priority or a, or the set point regulation is the criteria. They, based on that you choose. Now let us look into um, the comparison between CHR and ZN method. What we have is case of the ZN is also designed more or less for the load disturbance uh, rejection and at the same time if you look at CHR no overshoot, 20 percent overshoot versus the ZN tuning rule. These are the, the, the tables kept uh, one after the other for you to have a comparison here. So, we look into uh, these comparison, what is the observation here is that the control parameters for ZN tuning rule matches best with the step response, uh, sorry, uh, best with the with the 20 percent overshoot criteria. So, we have this particular AK, you see proportional gain is 0 0.7 over here, proportional gain is 1 here and TI by L is for PI control is 2.3 which is more close and at the same time you get something like uh, similar PID tuning rules here. We, we already know that Zenden tuning rule is having the criteria of decay, uh, quarter, quarter amplitude decay which fits. So, more or less CHR is taking care of that decay as well that we can conclude from here. 
But what is the drawback with CHR methods is that okay, this method will also suffer from the decay ratio being too large. So here it was if you consider between ZN tuning and 20% overshoot, this decays fast, which means that the closed loop system will have poor damping and, and uh, high sensitivity uh, when we look into the CHR methods, CHR uh, tuning rule. There comes further refinement for the tuning rules and cohen Kuhn method is another one, which gives um, uh, the tuning rules for the process transfer function for FOTD. So we have the FOTD model here, which is having the parameters Kp, uh, which is gain, process gain, the time constant T and the delay uh, L or the lag delta. In this case also, Cohen code also says that, okay, let's have the credit line criteria as the rejection of the load, load disturbances. Now we will have the we will have the uh, dominant poles position being considered for the controller design that will give the quarter amplitude decay ratio, similar to the objectives of the ZN method. But of course, this is applied on more rigor, uh, theory, theoretical way and so and so forth. If we consider similar to our uh, methodology in ZN, the uh, parameter A turns out to be Kp L by T and tau turns out to be L by L plus T. And, and they said, okay, now let's have the rule for P, Pi, Pd and Pid. These rules are designed nothing but by applying a dominant pole which will give the counter amplitude decay ratio. The idea behind Zedin method and Cohen Kuhn turns out to be same. Okay, so their objectives are same but they are applied on um, uh, ZN tuning rule was, was designed for the integrator kind of a process and then they made some, some jugar work to say okay now uh, if my uh, system also has a time constant then let's change L by L by, L by T and so and so forth. Here this, this has a little more theoretical background and that fits well for, uh, for this by if we consider uh, these parameters A and tau. All right. So now if we summarize, we have ZN tuning rule, which is simple and intuitive. And that's the reason it is more or less uh, very widely used in order to uh, consider, uh, consider uh, uh, the control parameter tuning because it requires a very little process knowledge. We can even design it with the help of the step, step response and the frequency response way. And we have also said that okay, if we are considering a frequency response method, the experimental way of getting the ultimate gains and, and ultimate frequency is very, very easily done. And that's the reason uh, we should be able to design the control tuning, controller parameters here. The process is characterized by, in both the ways, the process is characterized by two parameters that are easily, uh, easily uh, 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 we, we get it from the frequency response or the uh, time response way. And now comes the drawbacks of ZN method. Since it is simple <laughs> at the same time, it, it requires very little process information. So it uses also process uh, very, very less information. So in case you have a better understanding of the process, you have a better process model available, then Ziegler Nichols doesn't give the, the opportunity to use that particular those information. And that's the reason, though it is simple and intuitive, it it we may avoid using it if more process information is need is is available and we may go for Cohen Kuhn method way to consider the tuning. At the same time, uh, if we go for ZN tuning rule, we also know that this particular design criteria is quarter amplitude delay, decay. And if we consider this particular time, time uh, based uh, control objective, then it provides very low robustness. And that's where one has to be mindful of this. And uh, when we are going for this uh, uh, tuning using the ZN method. As compared to ZN, um, 
CHR method gives slightly better robustness and Cohen cone uses since it uses three parameters and still uses quarter amplitude delay decay as a design criteria. So it provides better robustness, uh, again better robustness as, and load, resist, load disturbance rejection uh, as compared to ZN method. But at the same time we also know that ZN is very simple method, very intuitive method. So we can we can we can use at certain cases, especially when the process is uh, completely black box to us. Uh, now we see that um, ZN tuning rule, Cohen cone, or CHR methods give us a very um, intuitive ways to design the controller. At the same time, we will have to do some kind of manual tuning even when these methods are giving you some approximate controller values. It is because finally these, these methods are experimentally obtained values, fair enough. But at the same time when we are actually performing, uh, actually connecting the controller to the process, we will further be needing some kind of manual tuning. So when, when we are doing the manual tuning, we can apply some simple rules here. What are those simple rules? So when we are designing the controller and we also have to give this controller uh, methods to an unskilled person, we have to create the procedures for uh, designing the controllers. So ZN method or these tuning rules give the basis to start with. So we start with and then we do the manual tuning for the fine tuning of the control parameters. Now here comes what should we apply rules some, some procedure we will have to give it to the unskilled person to uh, design the, to do the fine tuning as well. So what we can consider here is that if we are increasing the proportional gain, stability is affected. And how is that affected? When we increase this proportional gain, we know that the stability is going to decrease, okay. We start with the tuning rule method. The basis is my tuning rule method. Let us say we design PI controller. We start with designing it with the, by tuning it with the ZN method, we got some values. Now when you are doing the manual tuning for the fine tuning, we increase or decrease the proportional gain if we want stability to be decreased or increased or uh, respectively. If we in increase the, uh, we, we decrease the integration time or increase the integration gain, then error, steady state error will decay rapidly. This is a complete, um, uh, of course steady state error is going to be zero if we are having the integration um, controller already introduced. But the steady state or settling time is going to be uh, faster if I am having the integration time is decreasing. If I am decreasing the integration time, the stability is also affected. If I am decreasing the integration time, stability is also decreased. If I am using the derivative controller and I am increasing the derivative time, then stability is further, uh, further uh, affected and introducing the higher derivative time improves the stability because finally you are adding the phase leak to it and your point on the Nyquist curve uh, goes away from the ultimate point. And that is where you get better stability margins with the, uh, with the introduction of the derivative. Uh, controller. But yes, derivative time constants need to have some kind of an upper bound because otherwise your noises and other other things gets picked up. These are the practical limitations of using the derivative controller. Fine. So these are certain ideas behind doing the, uh, doing the manual tuning, when to increase and decrease. But there are further formal ways of doing the manual tuning and those formal me me methods are called with uh, can sorry and those formal methods are based on the tuning maps. Now these what are these tuning maps? Let us understand with this particular diagram. Let us consider a process transfer function s plus 1 to the power minus 8 means that there are there are 8 poles at minus 1 means it is a very uh, complicated system but its behavior turns out to be similar to, um, to some kind of a second order system and so on. Now 
For example, I have uh, this Zn method for this particular system gives you k means proportional gain as 1.13, uh, integral time constant as this and derivative time constant as this. It means I am applying the PID control. So what is this particular chart gives you is that if I go from left to right, my integral time constant is decreased. So from 10 to 5 to 3, but proportional gain is kept constant. But if I go from top to bottom, then my proportional, proportional gain is decreased from 1.5 to 1, 2.5. So this way we are creating the metrics of observations. This way I am changing the integral, uh, integral uh, time constant or integral gain, top to bottom I am changing the proportional gain, all right. Now let us see the observations here and what could be the values that would be so most suitable when I am changing the, uh, these integral time constants or the gain values for PI controller and what should be my best case is what uh, when I am doing the manual tuning. So this kind of chart helps in way. So if I go from right to left, we see that my uh, uh, if, I, if I go from left to right, what we see here is that uh, my settling time is reduced, right? It settles down to the origin. So the, the, uh, the, these plots are for the error and this particular you can see that it settles down faster, all right? But when I go from top to bottom, what is observed here is that the oscillations are reduced. All right. So this way we keep doing from going from top to bottom by decreasing the gain and seeing that where the oscillations are kind of better and, and reduced. And if we further go down, then my, my oscillations are further decreased, but at the same time my settling time is also decreased. But at some point of time, we would like to come to a conclusion where such that my best response is turning out to be in the middle of the matrix. And that is how we choose the manual tuned way of gain k equal to 1 and integral time constant as 5, okay. Something similar we can do it with Nyquist plots too. This was that earlier one was step response. This one is of uh, Nyquist uh, tuning map with the help of Nyquist plots. Now this Nyquist plots if we see again, the same gain is increased, gain is decreased from 1.5 to 1, 2.5 when we go from top to bottom and uh, integral time constant is decreased from 10 to 5 to 3 when we go from right to left. And we see that of course, we already know that the Nyquist plot, if I am decreasing the proportional gain, then what happens is this particular uh, curve is moving towards radi radially moving towards the origin you can see here. Every when we go from top to bottom this is going internally radially going towards the origin all right. This one also going radially towards origin whereas integral time constant is decreased means the integral gain is increased so your curve is moving towards the the ultimate gain point. So it is moving towards the moving towards the uh, uh, towards the uh, top side, top, uh, uh, top, top, uh, sorry. So it is moving towards the top left side where our I axis is, okay. So this is again gives you an idea what would be the, the best kind of uh, response that you get. This is giving a fairly good stability margin because this is very much away from minus one zero point. And that's the reason we can again fix this particular curve as the, as the uh, good point for the uh, tuning. So both methods we can use for manual tuning, either the frequency response way and plot the Nyquist plots when we are doing the manual tuning or we can use the step response way to consider it. So what we covered here is the PID tuning with the help of uh, first some tuning rules and then do the empirical tuning by doing some kind of uh, small fine tuning of the proportional gain 
integral gain and the derivative gains and so on. We also know that Zn tuning rules will give good response if L is less than 0.38 T. You go back and put this, this value into the tuning methods, tuning table that we have in Zn method and see what kind of proportional gain values and integral gain and the time um, derivative gain values that you get. You will have a fair idea that this particular L, if, if this particular lag is more than 0.38 T, uh, far more than 0.38 T, your, your gain values are turning out to be very different and proportional gain especially blows up. And that is where what we have to consider that the PID, PID tuning works if your system is not a delay dominant system. If it is a delay dominant system, it is a very good case to consider that PID tuning is going to be very difficult. So let us not try PID tuning but resort to some modern techniques and so on. But if your system is such that your delay is fairly okay with respect to the time constant of the system and rather if it is comparable with respect to L and 0.38 T. So if your delay is comparable to 0.38 T or lesser than that then PID tuning is going to work and that is the reason most 80 to 90 percent of the industrial controllers are still PID controls. Thank you. Thank you.